are coming. Sweethearts, what are you waiting for? Breakfast in bed? Another glorious day in the core. It sure is a pwn. This is another glorious day in the core. Or Agdictic. Ag Agdictic. A game whose name is probably a little bit too long, but this is from Gale Force 9 and it's a fantastic box. This is a cooperative survival game and can be played with one to six players where you take on the role of the colonial marines and undertake various missions which are presented to you on these big nice cards. The quality of everything in the box feels really nice, especially the miniatures and it comes with everything. It's got dice, it's got cards, boards, sharp sticks and most importantly to me is the miniatures. Now I only found out this game existed a few months ago and as soon as I did I jumped on them because the models look so cool. It comes with most of the well-known characters from the movie including Hicks, Hudson, Ripley, Vasquez and also comes with 10 Xenomorphs. Now to me Xenomorphs are some of the best designed villains ever in the world of cinema and I could talk about the design aesthetics of them for hours but I'm not going to bore you with all that. If you want to talk about aliens though feel free to send us a message in the comments. But for now we're going to get to painting these guys and I've been waiting to do these for a few months so I'm quite excited. And it's a nice change of pace because I mostly paint Warhammer. Mostly. Now we're going to start off with these absolute badasses, the Colonial Marines. I'm pretty sure all of these characters die at some point so I'm going to do my best to memorialize them with a few little details from the movies. For the bases I wanted to melt a couple of them to make it look like they'd been in a firefight and some acid blood had spilt onto the floor. Now this is a pretty unsafe way of doing it so I don't necessarily recommend doing it like this but if you do please use a respirator and also I don't recommend using your good soldering iron. This is a little gas powered one so I wasn't too worried about getting green gunk on the end of it. Now we're going to start undercoating these models and we're going to end up with a green base coat. And that might seem a bit counterintuitive seeing as they're already green, but if you try and paint on this surface as it is, you're going to have a bad time. Painting on bare plastic is always a bit of a nightmare. It means you're going to have to do loads of coats and you're going to end up with loads of streaks. So it's worth just spending a little bit of extra time doing a proper base coat. And we're going to start with Vallejo Surface Primer Black and we're just going to coat all of the models. And once all those are coated, we're going to give them a quick zenithal spray with white. And this is just regular white paint because we've already got the primer on we don't need to use any more primer colors now the purpose of this zenithal highlight is just to give us a bit of an idea of where the highlights are meant to go and also once you begin building up your layers you will get a slight hint of this highlight through the paint and considering most of the paint we use is somewhat translucent most of the things you do in the base coating stage of your models will come through in your final stages and that can be either good or bad but that's just the game we play now the two colours I've picked for the base coat is Vallejo Yellow Olive and Vallejo Golden Olive. And we're going to completely coat them in the darker green and then do a zenithal highlight with the lighter green. If you have an airbrush, zenithal highlighting is probably one of the first tricks you should learn. So it gives you massive results with only a little bit of effort. The only thing you really need to be careful of is how wet or dry your previous coat is. If your previous coat is too wet, the next coat can tend to slip off or just do strange things like become patchy or start making weird shapes in the paint. To avoid this and to speed it up, you can get yourself a hairdryer which you can keep next to you and just dry those coats. They don't take very long, just a couple of minutes. Just try not to melt them. As I'm mixing these paints, I tend to leave a little bit of the previous color in the cup and just add an extra layer in there. That just gives you a little bit of a smoother transition. Now we've got a base coat down, we're going to start adding some of the details. And for all the armor plates and the helmets, I'm going to be using Caliban green, or you can just use any other darker green. And this is going to be the base for all of our camouflage layers. And painting camouflage is pretty fun, you just got to remember that less is more. But first we're going to do two thin coats over all of these armor plates. And once you've got a good base for your camo, it's time to start adding the layers. The first colour I'm going to start with is a brown and this one is burnt umber and basically what we're going to do is start painting little streaks over the armour. Now if you pull up Google images and look up some photos of camouflage you'll see they're just little random shapes that overlap each other and they're quite easy to do but yeah as I said before just remember that less is more and the more complicated you try and make it the more messy it's going to look. And remember on this scale the shapes don't have to be exact so just trust in the thinness of your brush and just start doing little tiny dabs and streaks. Now we've got a base coat down, we're going to start adding some of the details. And for all the armor plates and the helmets, I'm going to be using Caliban green, or you can just use any other darker green. And this is going to be the base for all of our camouflage layers. And painting camouflage is pretty fun, you just got to remember that less is more. 
but first we're going to do two thin coats over all of these armor plates. And once you've got a good base for your camo, it's time to start adding the layers. Now if you pull up Google Images and look up some photos of camouflage, you'll see they're just little random shapes that overlap each other. And they're quite easy to do, but yeah, as I said before, just remember that less is more. And the more complicated you try and make it, the more messy it's going to look. And remember on this scale, the shapes don't have to be exact. So just trust in the thinness of your brush and just start doing little tiny dabs and streaks. Now the next color we're going to use is a tan color, and this is Zandri Dust. And following pretty much the same technique as before, just doing little shapes and streaks. It can also be a good idea to go back and forth between the colors as well, just so you can build up some more unique looking layers by overlapping the different colors. Now the next color is white and I'm going to be using my extra thin brush because I'm going to be a little bit more conservative with this color. As usual when painting with white, it's very stark. So just be a little bit careful about where you put it. As you can see, the brush I'm using here is in not very good condition. I picked up the wrong one, but I'm just going to stick with it. And that's it for a basic four color camouflage. And you can use this technique on any other projects that you have that require camouflage. And you can even mix up the colors to suit any other environments that you're trying to create. And I use the same technique on the trousers and some of the shirts of these Marines also. Just using different shades of green, slightly different from the ones we used on the armor plates. And now onto yet another green color. This is Castellan Green, and I'm going to be using this on all of the Marine's pockets and webbing and on Vasquez, her chest piece. In the movies, she has a Spanish phrase written on the front of the chest piece. It says, El riesgo siempre vive, which I think is the Spanish translation of fortune favors the bold, or any other version of that phrase. It's just a little bit of Aliens trivia for you. But I didn't think about adding that until after I'd assembled the model and the incinerator is a little bit in the way so I'm not going to do it on these ones. And for the pulse rifles and the motion tracker I'm just going to leave them as the original green and then highlight them later. And for the boots I'm just going to go with plain old black. If you do want to make your blacks look a little bit more interesting, try mixing them with other colours like greens or blues. That will not only make them look a little bit more realistic, but also open other opportunities when it comes to highlighting. And just remember that black is at the end of the colour spectrum between black and white, so you can't really shade this any more than it is. So you do limit yourself a little bit with using black, but I just felt like being a bit lazy today. And along with the boots, there's a small padded section at the bottom of the chest pieces, which I'm just going to fill in black. And the same with the straps that come with the incinerator that Vasquez is carrying. And now for one of my all-time favorite paint colors, which I'm sure you're sick about hearing by now, is Vallejo Gunmetal. And this is in their metal color range. And this is going to go over all of the metallic parts, so the weapons for most of them, the incinerator for one, and the ends of the barrels for the pulse rifles. And then all of the little accessories, like the little viewfinder pieces that they have near the helmets, and various parts on the webbing. And don't forget about Hicks's shotgun barrel as well, which I believe he keeps for close encounters. I'd like to keep this handy for close encounters. I heard that. And now for the great unifier, a nice green wash. And this is Athonian Camo Shade from Games Workshop. And this is just going to tie in all of those colors together. And this is arguably the most fun part of painting miniatures because this is where you really start to see the results. It kind of just blends all the colors together and just makes it look a little bit more unified and just gets rid of any harsh contrasts that you may have. And now for the skin tones, I'm starting with Vallejo Brown Rose for all the lighter skin. Now this is a color that I've only recently just started using, but I find it's a really nice base point for light skin. Replacing Bugman's Glow from Citadel. Now once all that base coat's dry, we're gonna wash it with Reichland Flesh Shade. And this is a reddish brownish wash, and this is just gonna sink into all the recesses and really help define the skin, make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And if you don't wanna do the rest of the skin, you can leave it here and it'll look fine. More than passable for tabletop standard. But if you do want to take it up another notch, just add two more color tones. 
And the first one for the light skin is Cadian Flesh Tone. And we're just gonna pick out all the raised areas on here, including the forearms and the muscles, the finger joints, and the nose and the cheeks. Any sort of defined areas that you can spot on the skin. And then we take it up to Kislev Flesh and we do the same process, just about half the amount of paint is used in the last step. And three is usually the magic number when you're doing highlights. I think it's just enough to stop you going insane with the highlights. For the darker skin, we're going to be doing the exact same process, just taking the color range a few steps down. So we're going to be starting with Vallejo Burnt Umber. And for the first highlight, I use a 50-50 mix of the brown rose from before mixed with the Burnt Umber. And then for the final highlight, just the brown rose on its own. And just this small detail here, I'm going to be using a slightly different green, Ogryn Camo. And this is a really pale, kind of beigey green. And this is just for the headbands that run along the outside of the helmets. And now we're almost done with the bodies of these marines, just the final highlights. For this I'm using Vallejo Golden Olive. And this is to highlight the hard edges on all of the hardware and also the pockets and bits of webbing that they have on them. Paying special attention to the most iconic of movie weapons, the pulse rifle. If you want to go extra crazy on this one, you can try and paint the little ammo counter on the side of the gun. But that's a little bit too fiddly for me. And now lastly, highlighting all of the camouflage parts with Vallejo Intermediate Green. And this is for pretty much all the hard areas, such as the shin pads and parts of the chest armor. Now these bases are really easy, we're just going to go in with Vallejo Gunmetal and base them all. And then just a quick dry brush with Vallejo Dura Aluminium. But when I got this paint out I realised I hadn't highlighted any of the other gunmetal parts, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. And then we go in with the dry brush of the Dura Aluminium. And this will give us a nice instant weathered and industrial look. And for the final touch of the base, this is Nurgle's Rot. And this is a special effects paint from Vallejo, and it's just a nice glossy, gluggy green. And this is going to be for the acid blood. And just a few extra movie details for these model, Vasquez has a red headband on with white dots. So I'm gonna base this in Vallejo flat red and then when it's dry, I'll come in and do some tiny dots with some just normal white paint. And using this same red, I'm gonna do a little heart shape on Hicks's chest piece. Now I'm fairly sure this is a heart. It's a bit hard to tell from all the images from the movies cause he's got straps and stuff over the top, but it looks like a heart. And at this scale, it looks pretty convincing. For Gorman, we're gonna repeat pretty much the same process. However, this time I did mix 50% green in with my black for the boots. So have a look in the final shots and see if you can notice any perceptible difference. And no camouflage on Gorman, uh, which is probably isn't gonna make a difference when you're up against Xenomorphs but I'm just gonna highlight all the little ridges in his jumpsuit with olive. And since you've just seen all the other techniques, I'm gonna speed through this and show you the last few details. Uh, just a couple of little details on Gorman that I'm going to show you how to do. 
The first one is this USCM patch on his right shoulder. And here's a picture of what it looks like. It's the most American thing I've ever seen, an eagle flying through space. And we're gonna simplify this quite a lot, starting with a background of dark Prussian blue. And then for the general shape of the planet at the bottom, I'm gonna use Vallejo Off-White. And the reason I'm using Off-White instead of Pure White is just so it's a little less stark. And whilst I have this color out, I'm also gonna base his left shoulder, which is an American flag, which I'm sure everybody on the planet knows what it looks like. Now, I must've missed this in my recording, but for the eagle shape, I just drew the general shape with a little bit of gold. And for the US flag, I'm not gonna to attempt to do the correct amount of stars and stripes because that's just way too small for me, but we're gonna go back to this dark Prussian blue and in the top left corner, just do a little square where the star section will be. And when this is completely dry, just come back with the white and do some really tiny dots, just as small as you can. And for the stripes on the flag, I'm using Vallejo Flat Red, and this is just gonna be the smallest stripes that I can possibly make. Now the trick to doing really thin lines like this is making sure your paint is thin enough, but also not too thin that it's going to run out on itself. It's a good idea just to test it on your nail before you put it onto your model, just to make sure that the consistency is correct. And now onto Ripley and Newt. And yes, that includes Ripley's awesome Reeboks. And we're gonna start with her jumpsuit, which we're gonna do in dark Prussian. And just two nice thin coats for this on the trousers and the bit you can see in between the jacket. And for the leather jacket itself, I'm gonna use a Citadel contrast color, and this is Wildwood. And I'm using a contrast paint to see if we can work with this pre-highlight that we've done. These contrast paints are super translucent, so they're really useful when you've got a nice zenithal highlight. They can really save you a lot of time, these contrast paints. It's just a slightly different finish than what you would get from the layering method. And this ended up only taking one coat of this paint, so as you can see, it saves you a lot of time. And for the skin, we're going back to Brown Rose. Now this is my new favorite starting point for skin tones, just because I find the Vallejo colors flow a lot better especially with my slapdash style of painting. Now for the pulse rifle, I'm gonna base it in Castellan green. And I'm gonna leave all the deep areas black, including all the little vents and the gap between the handle and the body. 
it's always good to have some reference photos um, i have my laptop next to me while i'm painting so that's pretty handy for looking up images when you need to on google and for the hair i'm using another contrast paint and this is black templar just being really careful when you get to those edges that touch the skin i find turning the model upside down helps with this that's why it's good to get yourself a little painting handle or a cork like i've got here and I did get a little bit of black on the skin, so I'm just going to touch it up with some more of that brown rose. And this is another reason why I like this painting method. It's forgiving when you make mistakes, because if you've just got basic base colours down, you can just use that same colour and go back over and fix your mistake. Whereas if you get another colour on a piece that you've spent ages detailing, it's going to be a lot harder to fix. And especially if you've been using lots of colours that you've mixed, it's going to be hard to get that colour back. And generally in the detailing stages, you're going to be using a smaller brush and paying a bit more attention. So there's less risk of you moving into areas that you're not supposed to be in. And for the Radical Rebox, I'm going to base them in Celestra Grey. And this is just any old light cold grey or bluey grey. And arguably one of the most fun parts about miniature painting is the washing. And first off it's Reichland Flesh Shade which is our reddish browny wash and that's going to go over all the skin and it's going to give us a nice warm tone. And for the blue sections it's Drakenhof Nightshade and this is just for the overalls. And on the trainers, I'm going to use a contrast paint and it's called Apothecary White. And this is just like a really light gray wash with a very slight blue. And for the straps of the trainers, we're using Vallejo Flat Red. Now these aren't exactly the same as the ones in the movies, so you'll just have to try and get the gist of where the red bits go. And then there's just a few little details with a medium gray. But as I said, it's open to interpretation, so just do whatever you think's best. And for highlighting the blue parts, I'm gonna use this Calgar blue, which I've quite heavily thinned down, and I'm just gonna run it over all the flat parts, avoiding the deep recesses. Now, I've probably got a bit too much paint on my brush in this footage, but just try not to be as reckless as I am. Or do, it's quite fun living on the edge. This is extreme miniature painting. For the next step, I just mixed the same color with a little bit of white and just traced a few little lines around the edges of these recesses. And for the highlights on the skin, it's the one, two combo again, Cadian flesh tone followed by Kislev flesh. Just trying to pick out all the little details like fingers, muscles, cheekbones, noses, things like that. And after two colours, this skin should really pop. For the base, it's a liberal coat of gunmetal, followed by a dry brush of dura aluminium. And to make the shoes pop, I just did a few little highlights of pure white. For Newt, I approached it slightly differently. Because she's got all these little holes in her clothes, I thought it'd be a good idea to do those first. Just so we don't have to try and get a really thin brush into these little gaps when we've got colors that we could mess up. And these went on with pretty much one coat because we've got that nice zenithal highlight base. Now she's wearing one of the Marines helmets, so we're gonna paint that in the same style we did for the Marines. And that starts with a base of Caliban green, followed by a few little random shapes of browns, beiges, and a tiny bit of white. And for her top, I'm gonna to be using Rakar Flesh. And the idea of this is we're gonna use lots of washes to make it look really dirty. Seeing as she's been living in a pile of trash for the last like two weeks. And for the dungarees, I'm going straight to Calgar Blue. And as I said, we're gonna wash the shit out of this model. And that's an old painter's trick if you don't feel like doing too much work.
And the first wash we're going to use is Drakenhof Nightshade and that's going to go over the dungarees. And I'm going to go pretty heavy with this. Not quite straight out of the pot heavy, I would never recommend that. I would always recommend using a palette just so at least you can see how much you've got in there. But still quite heavy. And then the next one is Agrax Earthshade and I'm going to do this over all the beige parts. And again, nice and heavy. And don't worry too much if this falls into the recesses of the holes in the clothes because it's not going to make much difference. And for the skin tone, we're going to wash with Reichland Flesh Shade. And for the highlights, we're going to be doing pretty much the same as Ripley with the Calgar Blue and just tracing over all the little creases. And because we went heavy with the wash, I'm just going to come back in with the original base colour of Rakoff Flesh. And for the skin, just Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh again. And that's it for Newt, and now let's move on to the nasties. I want to go full horrible. Take me to the nasties. All in good time, Hans. Now these are the kind of thing you don't want to meet in a dark alley. Not only are they armed to the teeth, quite literally, they also have acid for blood, so it's even a bit of a risk shooting them. Now I'm a big fan of the design choices on these villains. Now, I think the fact that they're bipedal sort of gives them a bit of an uh, impression of intelligence. And also the fact they're designed without eyes, so there's no chance of empathizing with one of these things. And they're also a hive mind, so all of them are heading towards the same goal, which is usually nesting and reproducing and all that, and bringing presents to the queen. Now, I really wanted to simplify the process for these models, so I wanted to see how effectively I could use my effect paints. So I started with just a prime of Vallejo Black, followed by a really diluted coat of Vallejo White from a zenithal angle from the top. And this is just going to help bring out the next colour, which is our special effects paint. Now this colour is Psychotic Illusions from Green Stuff World. And this has a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue and green in there, and this is just going to give us a really cool eerie looking colour. Which I think is going to be great for this Xenomorph skin, so it's going to give us a lot of different light options. And that's pretty much it, a little three colour Xenomorph. Now if I wanted to spend a little bit more time on these, I probably would have picked out the teeth with a metallic silver colour but I'm really happy with the way these have turned out. And this is a particularly helpful method seen as there's 16 of these Xenos. And all of these bases are just a quick Vallejo gunmetal with a dry brush of Vallejo Dura Aluminium. These were really fun models to paint and with a lot of nostalgia. And I finally had a chance to play the game and in itself is really fun. So all in all this is a really well priced box and if you're looking for a new game to play or new models to paint I seriously recommend this. Now it's been a long time between posting videos, but we've got a lot of content coming your way very soon. And I can't wait to share with you all the new projects that we're working on. And if you want to support the channel, please visit the Patreon in the description below. This will help us be able to dedicate more of our time to making these videos, which we very much enjoy doing. And if you want to hang out and play some games, visit our Discord channel, which is also in the description below. We'll be doing some game streaming sessions starting up pretty soon, and we'd love for some of you to come and join us.